94. Welcome to the library. I am the recorder, and I'd like to welcome you to the end of Series 4 of Intro to the Realms. In this entry, we're going to take a look at the chosen hands of destiny and the greater state of the realms at this point in our tales. From Cathian and his growing city of Farmhold, to the supermassive edifice that is Nomad's Forge with Han at its helm, and of course, the evolving tale of Optor. We shall take a look at how matters have grown for each over these last four series, and how they have affected the wider realms as a result. Perceptive patrons, regular visitors, and of course, new guests of the library, I do hope you have been enjoying our exploration to the realms of Jamamar. Sharing the realms with you has been an honor. And while there are changes coming for the way future entries will be made and shared, understand that I am aiming to make things both better and more easily understood and shared with you. Thus, we shall take a look at things for the future at the end. But before we continue with the topic of today's entry, allow me to ask you to like, share, and ensure you are subscribed to Griffin's Library. If you wish to further support the realms and the library, consider joining us at griffinslibrary.locals.com for easy access to entries days before their regular release. Other means of support are detailed in the description of this video as well as the channel's description page. Thank you for your consideration and support of the realms, regardless of the form it takes. Now, let us begin. Starting with the youngest of our heroes, Cathian, and his city-state of Farmhold. Their recovery from the blunt of the metatomic calamity. After the dust had settled and the various Kaisa inspectors had made their reports on the situation, Farmhold was cleared of any accusations pertaining to them being at fault for either the Antani presence or the detonation of the atomic weapons that have turned the former lands of Deeplock into a now-contained hellscape of atomic storms and mutated life. Even with being cleared, however, the staggering amount of military might that has been assembled is a matter of concern for many of Jamamar's leaders. As perhaps the most modern of city-states on the homeworld, the construction of farmhold fully made use of all the various innovations and advances achieved in the areas of defense and infrastructure over the last few hundred years. From its series of heated roads and paths, to the multitude of energy gathering and storing devices and towers, Farmhold is a shining example of just how far the realms have come in the last few ages. This combined with a numerically small yet astonishingly advanced series of forces arrayed for its defense and protection, and Farmhold could reasonably counted among the superpowers of Jamamar. The fact that it remains stridently a Wild Realm's power, refusing to apply to join the Council of Independent Sovereign Affairs, has made many wary. As a mean to lessen these tensions, Farmhold has been charged by Kaisa with the duties of containing the aftermath of Deep Lock's betrayal. While their core lands are shielded and contain the worst of the problems, these shields serve only to restrict the passage of energies and smaller, non-thinking objects. Therefore, it now falls to Farmhold to ensure that no radioactive beasts pour out of those lands to trouble the lands of Solaris. With the southern as well as the eastern and western edges of Deep Lock's former lands having been reformed during the Calamity, seeing the southern border completely torn open with a vast chasm, and the others suffering dozens if not hundreds of smaller collapses and rents. These make travel near impossible in those affected areas, as not only are there now massive pitfalls and rents in the thick woods that make up these borders, the constant downdrafts have had the effect of extending the reach and area of the fog lands that Farmhold was founded in by hundreds, if not thousands of square miles, 
to cover the entirety of the former Deep Block's lands. This makes attempts to traverse these areas only possible for small groups with specialized skill sets, but this forces any threats that might manage to emerge from the depths of the atomic hellscape directly north and to Farmhold. Farmhold has accepted the request of Kaisa to manage the area, and as more and more people make their way to this new city-state, it is clear that they have no intentions of letting any threats from the south endanger the golden time that they seem set upon entering. It will be of great interest to the other powers how Farmhold and its young lord hold up to the stresses of proper statesmanship. Fortunately for Cathion, and to the further worry of those aware of it, he is not alone. Han and his Nomad's Forge are not only the reason that such an immense project as Farmhold was even possible in the short amount of time it took them to build it, but they are also an ongoing partner for the mutual growth of both. After the conclusion for the Battle of Nomad's Forge, with the total surrender or capture of all attacking forces, Han and his people made the recovery and reuse of all the millions of tons of scrap created by the battle, as well as any ships captured, a priority. This of course included the refitting of the rogue cosmos ship that had led the attempt on the forge, the Reclaimer. This massive vessel will see most of its weapons and other offensive systems removed, along with all but the minimum of engines. Furthermore, it would be thoroughly reconstructed into a new form as a massive and advanced prison ship over the next few months. Once completed, it will see the various prisoners taken during the siege sentenced to its confines, with terms as little as 20 years for the lowest rank of the attackers, to several centuries for those of higher rank and authority were handed down to those that had come to Nomad's Forge set on conquest. The ship will be run by a Praetor and Celestian combined grouping, led and overseen by a Dre Sai, to ensure that all are treated well and taken care of properly while serving their sentences. However, except for those that sent forces to assist, as well as those of the highest levels of inter-realms politics. The fact that any of this occurred is all but unknown. Most that are aware of the battle are completely in the dark on any of the details, especially how the massive Cosmos vessel was taken itself. Those that do know the details are keeping the existence of a Praetor warship a closely guarded secret along with the large number of stations that the forge has been building out of the scrap and debris of the battle. These stations are of a previously unknown design and for a currently unknown purpose, but are clearly intended for inter-system space due to their size. Only those closest to Han and Cathian are aware that Optor and those of his kind that has flocked to his example are for whom the stations are being built, to serve as a series of stations that will serve and protect the various wild realms and planets that are outside of Kaisa's direct aegis of guardianship. They will also serve as a network for trade and shipping, allowing the wild realms to prosper even without the benefits of access to cog space that being a Kaisa member brings with it. They are also going to form the backbone of the alliance between the three hands of destiny, with the station and their praetor serving the needs of the local region of space, the forge providing the goods and supplies that the stations will sell and trade, and Farmhold being the wellspring of new designs as well as serving as the capital of this new wild block. Optor for his part, has been moving nearly non-stop from objective to objective, trying to do his part to further not only himself and the realms, but to protect those that have chosen to follow him. 
the extent of his popularity within his own kind is still a shock to him, and being picked as the leader of this movement of defiant praetors who seek to make themselves and their services more easily available to those that need it, would be most overwhelming to the young Praetor, if it were not for the unending duties he continues to take on himself. As he continues towards his latest mission, rescue operations on a hostile planet, he is slowly coming to terms with his new station, as well as the road ahead for him and his people. As for the rest of the realms, the ancient empire has begun opening itself for trade and travel with those systems closest to its own, while also slowly easing its political positions against intermingling with the rest of the realms. The mutiny amongst their cosmos fleet, along with their lacking ability to respond with rapidity to the events of the Calamity, has seemingly taught the leaders of the Empire the value of cooperation, albeit at a staggering cost. Concerning the Calamity and its effects, it is unclear how it was so perfectly arranged, but the effects of hundreds if not thousands of simultaneous detonations across the entirety of the realms, has massively accelerated the return of those star systems and nebulae that were lost when the home realm vanished from the cluster. Instead of it taking perhaps thousands of years for this to happen, it appears that within a decade, nearly the entirety of the cluster's celestial bodies will be returned to sync with the rest. While this should be a cause for celebration, it has become clear to those with knowledge of Optor and his allies that amongst those systems and peoples returning to sync, there is at least one wholly alien culture to the realms, and one that has a reason to be nothing but antagonistic to the rest. According to what has been uncovered so far, this species the Kaisenak, have endured the deaths of their gods and the near genocide of their forebears by Analar and Dragon forces in the time before time, and thus are likely not to see the modern realms in any sort of favor. Apparently capable of extraordinary feats of elemental and celestial manipulation, those aware of the situation are taking any and all possible steps to prepare for the crisis the Kaisoniak may present. What makes this even more stressful, and is a problem that most have either foreseen or postulated, is that also along the Lost Realms must be the bulk of the Antani that had found their way to the cluster in pursuit of the Teltechians ages ago. A minor research planet that was stumbled upon by Optor and ultimately consigned to a fiery end via stellar burial revealed just how much a threat even a single minor Antoni world could pose. This makes the identification and classification of all newly discovered systems or nebulas a priority for Kaisa and the realms in general. Thus, the Pathbreaker's Corps, as well as a myriad of other scouts and explorers, have seen vast increases in their supply and funding to expand and hasten their work of doing just that. The union of the Expedus and Cosmos fleets have gone some way in helping to prepare for this, along with the necessary expansion of the newly renamed ECDF or Expedus Cosmos Defense Fleet to assist with patrols of Kaisa-held regions. Thankfully, for the common man or woman in the realms, this is all portrayed as a new era of discovery and exploration. The threat of the Antani has been a constant since their first discovery and encounter with them, and the Kaisanak are not even an issue that any know of at this point. And thus, while cautious, the adventuring spirit of the realms and her people are not dampened in the slightest. 
They know that the gods and those in the seats of power will do what they must to protect the realm, and that there will always be heroes ready to answer the call of danger. Thus, the realms move forward with its head held high, ready for whatever the universe might throw at it. And this is where we find ourselves, and the realms at, at the end of Series 4 of Intro to the Realms. A bit scuffed, but unperturbed by the most recent of trials it has undergone, knowing that more challenges await, and preparing the best they can to meet them head on. Departing the realms itself for a bit to cover the future of content and upcoming projects, I want to again thank each and every one of you for choosing to join me on this journey of exploration. As for what is to come, let's talk about it a bit before we wrap up Series 4 officially. First, there will be a tale thus far for our tales, including Daragons. You didn't think I forgot about our Dwarven Investigator, did you? The is a massive amount of crossover between several of the other tail lines, so please be aware that it will be reflected in the compilations as they are released. As for Daragon's tail, it will have its own compilation of course. These should be coming out in the next several weeks. As for what comes afterwards, that is a matter of some debate. I am working on several projects behind the scenes, None of them, unfortunately, are near enough to completion for me to feel wise to tease them. Furthermore, it has been brought to my attention that perhaps revisiting topic and subjects already covered may have some value. Things could be better explained or groups of subjects that might be better covered together for understanding's sake. As always, I am grateful for your feedback and have been trying to figure out how best to accomplish these requests. As such, I am exploring several options, including doing remasters of older entries. I am aware that the lack of visual aids in most of them have proven a sticking point for many, and I would like to do what I can to address this. Again, I am exploring what options are available to me to do this. However. It is clear that of all the requests and queries I have received, that a more coherent and unified introduction to the setting as a whole is an absolute must. And thus, this lies near the top of the list of projects. However, I have also discovered I cannot reasonably produce entries in the way I have been if I am to take the needed steps to increase the quality of these entries. Therefore, I will be focusing more on making each entry that comes out the best possible than on stressing about a regular weekly release schedule. Trying to pump out an entry a week with all that care it properly deserves, along with the requisite level of visual and audio quality and add-ons, is just not in the cards for me. As for things such as the Podcast of the Realms, they too are being reformulated for the future, to both increase their regularity as well as their quality. So I hope you will forgive the reduction in output and appreciate the increase in quality I hope to provide. As always, you can keep up to date by becoming a free member of my locals community, where I will be making far more regular updates about projects and ideas as they are ongoing. If you wish to support me in my efforts, Locals is the place to do it, as well as to find supporter-exclusive content. Either way, griffinslibrary.locals.com is where the most up-to-date information will be found and available to both free members and active supporters. I do hope to see you there. With all that said, I want to thank each and every one of you, my perceptive patrons, regular visitors, and new guests of the library, for your time, your interest, and of course, your support of Griffin's Library and the realms of Jamamar. It has been an honor thus far, and I look forward to the future. Now, 
until you make your way back to the library for your next entry of Intro to the Realms. I, as always, have been the recorder. And by the nine and four, be well, take care of yourselves, and each other. If you'd like to contribute to the further exploration and explanation of the realms, please consider leaving a comment, a like, and sharing the video around. I read all the comments and make efforts to reply to each. Thank you for helping to grow the channel and know I look forward to each and every one of your comments. Other methods of support can be found in the channel's description. Thank you for watching.